Michelle Martin with Ag on Wheels, and today we find ourselves in Montpelier, Virginia with Cy Strong of Windy Run Farms, and this used to be a dairy farm turned into a row crop farm. You show me around and tell me all about it? Absolutely. Can you handle all my energy? We're going to find out. Sure hope so. Best of luck. Let's go. when a grower chooses to double crop, there's gotta be some sort of benefits. What benefits are you seeing by double cropping? So we know that our plants are gonna go through some stress uh, throughout the year, whether it's hot, dry, and they're gonna be susceptible to diseases like frog eye leaf spot. Uh, so to like better combat that, we apply a fungicide like Miravis Top to all our acres of beans, that way, we have the beans set up to be as healthy as they can be going into that stress period so they can handle that and still make a good yield. I think even as a, as a human and not a plant, we all have stress. Ever since you've started using Maravis Top, I'm assuming you've seen some sort of change in your crop. Tell me those changes. So we started applying Maravis Top in 2021 over top of our soybeans. Did it on 250 acres. And across that 250 acres, we saw a 20 bushel increase where we applied it versus where we didn't. So then last year in 2022, we applied it to a thousand acres of soybeans. And over the course of a thousand acres, we still saw 15 bushel an acre increase over a thousand acres. All right, so a better yield is a better deal. Guess that means you're buying our lunch? You got it. All right, let's go, because I'm hungry. Sai, you're a really busy guy and you obviously are constantly on the move. So I'm assuming you don't have the time to come out here and check your crops all the time after the product's been applied. So tell me a little bit about what happens if you can't make it out here. So uh, we rely a lot on Syngenta and their team of people that they have in place to scout our crops before we spray and then go back and check and make sure that the product we applied actually did the job it was supposed to do. If they're doing their job right, which they always do, right? That's right. <laughs> All right, Sai, so the other field we were in was a double cropped. This is not a double cropped field. Show me the difference. I mean, it's pretty loaded over here. Yeah, so as you can see, this plant has probably twice the amount of pods. They're a whole lot fuller. This plant has been in the ground since about the 25th of April, as opposed to the other field was planted on the 4th of July. So that gives us a yield advantage. But we've got to make up for only growing one crop in this field, as opposed to having two crops in the other field. But you're still getting a great yield on both, huh? That's what we hope for. <laughs> So a lot of regions get too much water. A lot of regions don't get enough water. There's irrigated and non-irrigated farmers. Tell me about your water issue here. Are y'all irrigated? So we don't have any irrigated acres. We most of the time are fortunate enough to have enough rain to make a crop. Some years we don't. Um, sometimes we have double crop beans that don't make anything. Sometimes we have full season beans that don't make anything. That's why we try to spread that out over the course of three months of planting these beans. We're at the mercy of mother nature and it's weather. That's right. What kind of insects are y'all dealt with here, especially in these soybeans? So we have uh, problems with corn earworm and with loopers. Uh, we apply besiege, which gives us 21 days worth of coverage to protect against both those insects and a lot more. So you're telling me that the corn earworm is a major problem here in the soybeans but we're not standing in corn. So how can a corn earworm affect these soybeans? So when the corn plant starts to dry down, the corn earworms will come out of the corn. The bean pods are more tender and they can feed on that. So what we do is we apply Besiege because it has multiple modes of action and it's really good on the corn earworm that is resistant to other insecticides. And I said earlier, it comes full circle to provide 
the insects come full circle, you know, on different crops to provide us with more problems. But it's a good thing we got a good solution, right? That's right. There we go. All right, Sai, so I want to know family history. How did you end up farming? How'd you end up here? So my family has uh, ran a dairy here. We milked cows until 2017. Um, we sold the cows. We transitioned to uh, mostly row crop farming, corn, soybeans, and uh, I took over the, the farm in 2018. But what challenges do you face that are similar to the challenges you faced as a dairy farmer? Yeah, I would say that the main thing was to, to keep the cows happy, to keep them making milk. Now it's a little easier. All we have to do is keep our plants happy. That's right, and you don't have to be up at 4 o'clock in the morning in the barn milking the cows, right? Yeah, and the corn <laughs> plants, they don't run out in the highway and get hit. <laughs> you make a valid point. <laughs> All right, Sai. a lot of people these days are either giving up and throwing in the towel or selling their land. Why aren't you doing that? I'd say farming's in my blood. It's what I'm passionate about and it's what I hope I can do until the day I die. Tell me a little bit about this man that seems to have such a special place in your heart, which is your grandfather. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much spent most of my time growing up with him here on the dairy, he would pick me up in the mornings uh, pretty early and we'd come milk the cows and feed. And he played a really big part in making me the man I am today. I'm pretty sure when he came to wake you up that early in the morning, you didn't like him back then, did you? <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, for the first few times, I used to wait by the door and then after that, he'd have to drag me out to bed. <laughs> but again, you know, it's formed you to be who you are today. And I think that he's probably instilled a pretty good work ethic into you. Yeah, I, I would say so. He's definitely always worked hard and uh, taught me that, you know, that's, that's how you get where you need to be by hard work. Sai, so thank you so much for having me and showing me around your operation. I know we only saw a small portion of it, but I got to get on a plane and go. So I really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome anytime. Where will I be next? Only God knows. We'll see you guys next time and God bless.